morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be here with you guys. Um, before I get started, what I want to do is firstly openly acknowledge um, the works of GFA. Um, and the reason why I want to start with that is because with events like this um, being delivered by workforces where they are predominantly white British, it's very common for, um, for those organisations to scramble around very quickly to try and find um, the nearest and the easiest black faces to appear and try and tick the boxes. Um, and why I want to openly applaud GFA is because I've had the pleasure of um, interacting and working with Roger and the team for the best part of the year. So from, from speaking from my personal perspective, this isn't a lastminute.com um, reach out to the black person to, to tick the Black History Month box. Um, I know that the team um, and the IAG specifically, which I've also been um, have the privilege of attending as well, I've worked hard throughout the year consistently um, to try and make Gloucestershire more inclusive as much as possible, um, which is something that I haven't witnessed in a lot of county affairs around the country. So I first wanted to open and applaud you guys for the work that you're doing on a consistent um, So yeah, my name is Tejan Hutton. Um, I'm the grassroots manager at Kick It Out. Um, a little bit of history about myself. I've been involved in football for the best part of, of 25 years. Um, started playing at a very young age. Um, I was first exposed to what it means to be black in England when I was around 13 years old, when a, a player who was also 13 years old decided to turn around and call me a monkey. Um, at that time, um, I had never been racially abused in any other environment, whether it be at school or on the street. So for me, my first experience of knowing what it feels like to be racially abused was in a footballing environment. Um, and that's something that I've taken with me and will take with me forever because it's um, it's kind of like being hurt by the one that you love the most um, because I love football, it's my passion um, and it always will be, it's, it's what I use to, to reach out to young people but it also gave me my first experience of being hurt to the heart in terms of being exposed to racism at a very young age. Um, fast forwarding, I'm now in a privileged position um, to run my own youth football club um, to use football as a tool to reach out to young people and to help them reach their their potential. Um, as a football facilitator, my, my, myself, it's, it's a shared opinion with myself and not only just black people, but ethnic minorities around around the country. You grow very um, frustrated with EFA, um, kick it out, um, your county affairs and all the authorities and governing bodies that are, are here to quote and unquote protect us in the footballing world. And Myself is no, I'm no um, exception to the fact that we've been failed many, many times. We've been failed more times than we've been, um, than we have been protected. Um, so, as a football facilitator, I, I grew a very strong resentment towards governing bodies, charities like Kick It Out, Show Races, and Red Card, because I felt like they were doing nothing for us. Um, so one day I sat down and I, and I came to the realization that sometimes shouting from the outside can't infiltrate or shape or, or um, influence the system. And when talking about the football industry itself, we're talking about a system that is built upon the foundations of this country itself. As a result, a lot of the decision makers, um, a lot of the people with power and authority, they are white British um, and have a um, very um, a narrow old set mindset that they've taken into previous generations and now into this generation. How can we shape that? How can we reshape it and to um, to, to make a change that's that's better off for future generations? So um, in the in in the midst of my frustrations of a company that kick it out, I decided to apply for a role which was leaving the grassroots department. Um, the grassroots department that kick it out is very new. It's for the best part of about two years old right now. Um, and the aim of the department itself um, is to represent people who are have been and are will be on the receiving end of discrimination in the ways that they should be represented. So it's keeping an ear to the ground, making sure you stay on the ground so that when you are in the boardroom meetings with the decision makers, that you are an accurate de um, depiction or reflection of the community that you're meant to be serving. Um, and that's that's my aim in my tenure where I kick it out, is to try and make sure that I remain an accurate um, and a, um, a consistent representation of the community's needs and the community's wants. And by, when I say community, I'm talking about the entire grassroots sector. Um, so when we're talking about influencing, we're talking about making sure that you, you maintain a level of stubbornness, making sure that you, you, you maintain a high level of integrity and intelligence, because I've been in situations where 
I've delivered workshops to some very, very tough audiences who just refuse to adapt their mindset to um to what what we see today, which is a lot more diverse than what it was in the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Um, um, so yeah, um, that's a little bit of a background in, in of, of of myself. Um, during my time, I kick it out so far, so it comes out the best part of three years that I've been serving. I kick it out. There's been a, a recurring pattern of just the forms of discrimination that I've seen come to the forefront. Um, the top four that we have, um, the fourth being um, disability, the third being religion, um, the second being your sexual orientation. And throughout my entire time, the most prevalent form of discrimination has always been race. Um, so if you're talking about the topic of supply and demand, Kick It Out was formed as Kick Racism Out of Football. And here we are rebranded as Kick It Out. And the, the, the most prevalent form of discrimination is still the same in terms of race. Um, now, I'm embarking on a journey right now to make sure that that people understand there is a distinct difference between the racial experiences of different people. So my experiences as a black man in England is going to be completely different to the experiences of a black Asian male in England, which is completely different to the experiences of a black Asian female, a black female or Asian female. And to bunch us all together into one group to try and decipher or to accumulate some type of um, solutions to all of our problems is always going to do us a disservice because our, our experiences are all the same, are all different, sorry. Um, and so I'm embarking on a, on a journey right now to try and find ways in which we can get national governing bodies and county affairs to become receptive to the fact that we need to be more specific in our approach when trying to uh, combat these community issues. Um, what, that, what does that look like and how does it manifest in reality? I have no idea right now. And that's me be, be completely transparent with you. Um, I'm never going to be able to um, cook up an answer to decades worth of issues within a matter of a few years. Um, but I'm proud to say that we've actively got the ball rolling to try and make some type of tangible, tangible change. Um, it's important for me to use the Kick It Out platform to make people understand that this idea of um, banners and T-shirts and badges and wristbands and all that stuff that we've been holding on to for the past 25 years, um, it's all lip service. And lip service hasn't gotten us to a place of progress. It's gotten us to a place of still seeing bananas on the pitch, still hearing monkey chants, still getting racially abused to and fro, um, to attending games or on the pitch. So our approach has to change. Um, and, and for me, in terms of um, changing our approach, is how can we make sure that we're holding everybody accountable? Um, that includes football clubs, that includes county affairs, and more importantly, that includes the, the national governing body. Um, we've still got a long way to go, um, but I can honestly say that we're working so hard to make sure that the right conversations are being had and the right things are being said. At times, the, the things that are being said in these meetings, um, it gets a bit rough, um, it gets a bit heated, um, but at the end of the day, when you're representing the people in the right way, um, you can't worry about who you're upsetting. Um, you just have to make sure that with integrity that you're representing the people correctly. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. I just wanted to give you guys a bit of background on on myself and, and where to kick it out. Grassroots department is headed to. Um, we are heading places, and we're not going anywhere anytime soon, regardless of whether or not we've got funding or whatever rumours are out there right now. Um, we're striving to make sure that we we are a, a firm and accurate representation of the needs of the community to bring those needs to the boardroom meeting to help to help influence change. So yeah, thank you guys for your time. Thanks very much, Tejan. Um, really, really, really passionate, as as I would expect from you, and just appreciate the support that you've provided us over the last year that you mentioned at the start. So, really, really, thanks for that. No, my pleasure. Are, there, Thank you. are there any questions that have come in for for Tejan, Matt? Uh, no, no specific questions that have come in, but a couple of um, comments from from people on the group just saying, well said and very impactful. Thank you. So, yeah, just to echo what Roger just said there. Thank you for your for your time and joining us this evening. It was really, yeah, really good. No, thank you for having me.